Good evening. This is a special program to celebrate Veterans Day, which is forthcoming. I have a guest who's a mariner, man of the sea, and also quite a poet. His name, Patrick Kennedy. And so as we talk about Veterans Day, we talk about happenings in the United States Merchant Marine. At one particular time, the Merchant Marine was kind of a standoff. And then in 1965, Congress, by a bill, made the United States Merchant Marine a part of the armed forces. As we're all familiar with December the 7th, 1941, the Japanese, as we know, attacked Pearl Harbor. But also there was a situation existing in Europe. A fanatic by the name of Adolf Hitler. And in the Pacific, the Japanese Tojo. Franklin Delano Roosevelt realized the circumstances involving the situation. We were at war. We had to be prepared. But prior to that situation of December the 7th, we were building ships, liberty ships, for the purpose of two factors. Number one, we realized then that we now had a situation existing in the Pacific and we had a situation in Europe. Liberty ships, over 680 of them. But there was a problem. Had the ship, who was gonna man them? And so we started with the United States Merchant Marine Schools called Maritime schools, so that we could train the men of the sea, the merchant mariner for both deck and engine, that way to be prepared. And as we all know, the Liberty ship and the men that sailed them were cargo and troops, both in the Atlantic into Europe and then into the Pacific. And so on this day, we're celebrating Veterans Day. Veterans Day on the 18th day of November, a day in which is remembrance to the men and the women who fought for freedom. As I had said before, freedom is a very costly word. And so men of the Merchant Marine manned the ships and the armed guard, which part of the United States Navy, came aboard those ships as a protecting unit. And so we began. Actually, at the beginning, prior the World War II civilian sailors that sailed the Liberty ships into situations of two factors. Number one, the submarine, and the sinkings, and the sinkings in the Pacific. You know, lest we forget men of the Merchant Marine, for now they are a member of the armed forces. They have the privileges of the Veterans Administration. Over 6,795 U.S. merchant mar mariners are asleep in the deep. That's quite a task. And secondly, there's many stories behind the stories of the United States Merchant Marine and the men that sail the ships with cargo and troops to protect. 
I have a special guest this evening, one that is a poet, yet a mariner. And so we are going to turn this back over to Patrick Keneally and poems. And he has a poem for you at the beginning of this program. Pat, nice to have you. Oh, thank you, Jack. It's quite and an I, honor. And I wonder if you would, this poem is called The Lament. Thank you, Jack. I wrote this poem for the Merchant Marine, both the Irish Merchant Marine, the British Merchant Marine, and the American Merchant Marine. <clears throat> As a young man, I was on the trawlers in Ireland. Most of our young men were gone, and women were gone into the British forces because we knew if Britain went down, Ireland would go down with it. I started to think about the friends we lost. I grew up in the Clatter fishing village. I was born in New Docks and I moved over to the village at four years old. And most of the mariners there were in the British Merchant Marine. And of course, when war broke out, we maintained our neutrality because we were still occupied by Britain in the north of Ireland. And uh, even though we were neutral, our fire departments and our ambulance would go up into the north of Ireland to help out during the war. We had to start our own merchant marine because the British ships no longer brought uh, goods to our ports. So the Irish Merchant Marine was formed, Irish shipping, and uh, they pay the price with the U-boats. Uh, especially on the streets around where I grew up. Uh, we used to have a postman come, we, they called him bad news because he never brought good news. And I always remember as a young boy the wailing and crying of our neighbors because another ship has gone down. I thought about this and this is what I wrote. Stand by, please. I, to sail once more in peace on God's majestic ocean. No U-boats now to take their terrible toll. When the wolf packs attacked almost nightly on their North Atlantic winter war patrol. Recalling once more those long dark nights and the heaving sea that brought me safely to thee. When we were young and so much in love, with every flowing emotion, flowing like the master's windswept ocean, I to watch once more the wheeling gulls, the diving gannets at the dawning of another day, drinking in God's salty air, sailing close hauled on the master's rolling sea, Keeping a weather eye open day by day, plotting a course to a safe harbor, taking time to pray. From dead ahead, the distant guiding harbor light beckons once more as we sail close hauled off New England's rock bound shore. Just to count once more a million stars across the heaven's night sky on watch. A lone mariner, stargazing on the twelve to four. I, to feel once more a gentle sea breeze, caress my aging, weathered face, spindrift flying, wind song in the rigging, head seas shipping aboard, sea smoke passing astern without a trace. Oh yes, like the sands of time, my old memories are fading away. Like the disappearing dreams of yesterday, sweet dreams of old Ireland and dear old Galway Bay. I, to catch once more a sunset at sea off old Cape Cod, or a sunset falling, falling, like a golden coin, slowly falling, 
falling from the hand of God. And that's the old Merchant Mariner's Lament. Beautifully done, Pat. This particular program is dedicated to the men and the women who have served their country. Situations existing even today in Afghanistan and Iraq. And the men that sail the ships are still merchant mariners under the command of the military sea lift command. From the captain to the chief engineer to all the crews, there are merchant mariners. We all know that the United States Merchant Marine started in 1775, quite a hundred years ago or better. And we also know that they have served adequately well over the years of war and of peace. The Merchant Mariner during World War II served under the command of the armed forces and they served in every invasion, given decorations and honors by Great Britain Russia, France, and Norway. They were prisoners of war of the Japanese and the Germans, and yet they served side by side with the U.S. Naval Armed Guard, which had one of the highest casualty rates in the Navy. They fought together and they died together. Today, there are merchant mariners on the beach that remember those days. And one thing in particular I'd like to add for Medfield. At Baxter Park, on a flagpole, there is a flag of the United States Merchant Marine. And at the bottom of that flagpole is a plaque dedicated to a merchant mariner who had once lost his ship, but continued sailing on others. His name, Roger Hardy. We have not forgotten the Merchant Mariner, for he was part of a situation that we were confronted with in the Atlantic and in the Pacific. And it had been said, let's we forget. As I had said earlier, freedom is a costly word. We fought for it. We continually fought for it. It is never put away. It is always there ringing clear. For this country has given so much to so many, many men. And Veterans Day is a day for the men and the women to say thank you for what you have done and we're home. Others we know are not. We talk of situations existing today with Afghanistan and Iraq. We've lost men and we've lost women. And yet, the merchant ships still sail, and the, marin, and the merchant mariner man those ships. So let us not forget them, not as a veteran forgotten, because they are also a part of the U.S. Armed Forces. They've given so much. There's mariners today that are on the beach that reminisce of the days of yesteryear. And those days are remembered quietly in situations in which they were confronted with. We also know that the merchant marine suffered 
a tremendous amount of loss because it was one in which the U-boats sunk many ships. Many men were lost, both from the armed guard and merchant mariners. But others returned home. And today, remember, they're a part of the fight of freedom. I'm going to turn this back over to Patrick Keneally, for he has a lovely prayer that he'd like to read to you. It's called The Sailor's Grave. Pat? Thank you, Jack. Uh, the reason, Jack, that I wrote this, I happened to go uh, to Plymouth Harbor, where I live, and they dedicated most of the songs and tunes uh, to the armed forces, but the Merchant Marine was never mentioned. And I was very disappointed. Uh, I said to my wife, Evelyn, you know, I'm going to go up there and talk to Maestro. She said, you can't do that. There's hundreds, thousands of people here. I said, I wouldn't sleep tonight unless I go up and talk to Maestro. So I did. And he looked down at me and he said, uh, you have a question? I said, yes. Did you ever hear of the Merchant Marine? He said, what did they do? And the hair went up on the back of my neck. I said, they lost more men than the combined forces of these United States and never got the recognition for it. And it'd be nice if they were remembered by a song or a tune. He said, well, they don't even have a song. I said, well, I know one song that always reminds me of the Merchant Marine. And I said, it's Roger Whittaker's Last Farewell. So he wrote that in the book. And he said they would play it at the following 4th of July. That night, I got thinking about this, and it kind of bothered me. And I said, you know, it's 3 o'clock in the morning, but I'm getting up, and I'm going to write something. So I stand by, because this is what I wrote. I call it A Sailor's Grave. I dedicate this poem to the Merchant Marine and to those that go down to the sea in ships there are no flowers on a sailor's grave, for he sleeps beneath the restless wave. Far from the land, 10,000 fathoms deep, his life now over, no watch to keep. His sailor's grave is far from the family he loves so well. Come winter wind and winter gale, no one survived to tell the tale. That is why there are no flowers on an ocean swell. For the sea does not give up its secrets, and the sea will never tell. Thank you. Thank you, Pat. That's a beautiful poem. Lest we forget. The U.S. lost about 866 merchant vessels. Many men, as Pat has just read the poem, returned. There's so much written. Veterans Day is a very important day. On the 18th day of November, Many, many years ago, it began. The Merchant Marine itself continues, and men that have sailed are home. 
As I had said earlier to you, many will sit and discuss history. Well, the Merchant Marine is a part of that history. So very much a part of it for, as I had said, it began in 1775 during the Revolution and has been sailing ever since. And people that had sailed the ships as mariners take pride. They had fought and died for freedom. There are many back now that we celebrate Veterans Day. We talk of Veterans Day. And even today, as it was yesterday, they remembered. And that's why I call the program The Forgotten Veteran. For he was a part of it just as well as men that bared arms and hit the beaches at Normandy hit the beaches at Guadalcanal, Tarawa, off the ships that were manned by the merchant mariner. The armed guard of the Pacific stood watch with them, hoping to fought off any attacks that happened. Many merchant mariners are home. A day of yesteryear. But yet memories of a situation during war is never really forgotten. It can't be. It's embedded in your mind to all the veterans of all the services. It's embedded in their minds. Some people will come and say, well, gee, what did you do? And they say, oh, not much of anything. And they all have some very heavy stories to tell. But they're home. Home after a situation of war. Fighting for freedom. You know, today, talking of veterans, I was talking with Pat earlier, and he has one in particular that he would like to talk about, an ex-Marine. And so, Pat, I wondered if you pay homage to this gentleman, as we pay homage to all our veterans. Thank you, Jack. And tell us a little bit about that, Marine. This particular Marine, uh, he's proprietor of our R&R &R Marine, formerly of uh, Hingham, New Emmett area, now in Pembroke. Uh, I've known him for many, many years, and he's the most Christian man, I think, that I ever came across. Uh, he is the Marine. I see him wince in pain from shrapnel wounds time and again, but he never complains. Uh, he works m harder than his own men. And over the years, I've come to admire him more and more. And uh, I got thinking about him and watching him in pain all the time with all complaints. And I said, I think I'm going to put something together for him. And other poems that I have written, he has seen about the sea. And uh, actually, he had them on display in his uh, place of business. 
uh, in that last case. I said, maybe I'll surprise them last uh, Veterans Day. And I put something together for him uh, as a surprise. His family told me he visited all the veterans' graves on Veterans Day. And then he comes home to his family and is glad to be able to come home. So I put something together, and if you please stand by, and I would like to recite this for you. The Marine. This is for Richie Lalonde of our and our Marine in Pembroke, my friend. He's like the Irish Wolfhound, gentle when stroked, Fierce when provoked, hence the following poem. War battered dogs are we, fighters in every clime, diggers of trench and grave, mockers be mocked by time. Happy Veterans Day, Rich. Thank you. Thank you, Pat. As you say, when we talk today of the United States Merchant Marine, we talk about also the men. Let's go back to a very fierce battle at Iwo Jima. Merchant ships with troops on APAs drop over those nets so that the Marines and crawl down those nets into LCVPs to hit the beach. Now those ships that are there are manned by merchant mariners. But it had been said by a very fine gentleman who was no longer with us. His name was Nimitz. He had said that, and I quote, the United States Merchant Marine and the men that sail those ships are just as part of us as we are as a part of them. Because the pride isn't just one specific service. The pride is all services. For the men that have fought and the women that have fought and are home are a part of freedom. And a lot of them, unfortunately, by sorrow, have given their lives so that we celebrate Memorial Day, we celebrate Thanksgiving, we celebrate Christmas, but in mind, here in Medfield, as you go to Baxter's Park, you see the monuments. Those are the men and those are the women who have given their lives for freedom and to be honored accordingly. We have so many tales of yesteryear, and yet very few in a page of a book. But we, as I had said earlier, are very proud here in Medfield of what we have given. Given our boys, our women. And they've gone off and bought for freedom. A lot of them now are at home. As Pat had got through reading about a Marine in Vietnam, situations, and the U.S. Merchant Marine continues. And so, on the day, the 11th day of November, is Veterans Day to pay honor to the men and to the women 
that have fought to keep us free. Pat, I understand now, before our closing, we have a prayer, if you would. Thank you, Jack. I did not write this prayer, but it's been in my families for many, many years. Uh, cleaning out the back room one day, I came across a tube and I opened it up. I was curious. Somebody gave me this, I think, while I was on a visit in Ireland, but when I unfolded, there was my coat of arms. And I don't know who gave me this, but it was the ancient map of Ireland. And when I looked at it, it said Keneally. And underneath it said, the son of a poet. And I said, that's where I get this poetry from. But I came across this prayer and it says it all. And I would like to share it with you on this Veterans Day. And I want to thank you, Jack, for giving me the opportunity to share this with the American people. Uh, the first time I really seen the American flag, I was on a merchant ship going into Hamburg, Germany, going up the Elbe. And an American ship, it was the depth of winter, passed by, and I seen the flag in the breeze. Little did I know that one day I would live under that flag. But after seeing the Baltic ships and the Russian ships with nobody on deck, and to see the Americans on deck moving around at will, it, 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 the emotion I, I can hardly, the freedom that they had to be able to roam their decks, well, I, I could feel what a beautiful flag. Not too long after that, I happened to be, uh, we had problems with our engine, and I, I was in the English Channel, and we put into one of the ports there at Brixham. We were to meet uh, a plane there for an engineer to come on board. And it was a long row, believe me, to get ashore there. But we did. And the building, this sailing ship, and I inquired, and they said, that's going to be a replica of the Mayflower. I said, really? And they said, yes. That was in 1952. Little did I know then that one day I would reside in Plymouth five minutes ride away from that ship, the Mayflower. But I wish to share on this Veterans Day this prayer called the Sailor's Prayer. Stand by, please. The Lord is my pilot, I shall not drift. He lighted me across the dark waters. He steered me into the deep channels. He keepeth my log. He guided me by the star of holiness for his namesake. Yea, though I sail mid the thunders and tempests of life, I shall dread not danger, for thou art near me. Thy love and care, they shelter me. Thou preparest a harbor before me in the homeland of eternity. Thou anointest the waves with oil. My ship rided calmly. Surely sunlight and starlight shall favor me on the voyage I take 
and I will rest in the port of my God forever. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Pat. The beautiful poem. It's a way to end our program. Reminds me of memories. And there's many men now that are home and women that have fought, that have memories. And so we wanted to bring to you a story behind the story of the United States Merchant Marine. And secondly, it gives us privilege and pleasure to have Pat Keneally here to read those poems, for they mean a great deal to him and people that have heard them a great deal to them also. So I'd like to take this privilege of thanking you, Pat, for being here. Thank you, Jack. Thank you again. You did a beautiful job with those poems. Thank you. It brings a lot to mind. And in closing, just a few words. Lest we forget. Good night. This program was made possible through the generous support of your Medfield friends and neighbors, folks just like you. And thanks for watching.